Hello there, this is the Shadow Ranger gonna do a video. Um I'd like to say quick video, but I don't know how long this is gonna take. I'm just gonna answer two quick questions that I got. Um This first question I got was from XWF two thousand one. He sent me two questions. He says do you think that WWE are only making Daniel Bryan and CM Punk their champions to make the IWC happy? And what do you think of Jesse Neal leaving TNA? Uh, let me get to the Jesse Neal question first. I think that'll be shorter. Um, I like Jesse. He was a newer guy. You know, he was still improving every day. Um, I listened to a recent interview with of him. And, you know, he cleared up some stuff. He basically said it was a money issue. There was all these rumors about him going around. He said, you know, he said he had no problem going to OVW. And, you know, but they wanted him to move to Louisville and, 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 and train at OVW. But he just said the money wasn't good right for him. You know, you know that's understandable. He didn't say how much, but he just said it was enough for him to be able to... to to work with because you know he had to pay for moving expenses to move to Louisville because he lives in Florida and you know he's engaged to get married and you know getting a new place get new furniture and a new place to live you know that, that happens he just basically said you know the money wasn't good enough for him and he said you know just he with his current situation that the amount they offered him he just wasn't enough for him to to get by on and, you know, that's understandable. You know, Gail Kim, when she left TNA a few years ago, she said the same thing, you know. It's a money issue. That's usually the reason people leave TNA. Most of the time when you see somebody leaving TNA, it, it usually ends up being a money issue. Who People who cho chose to leave. Not like people who were fired, but usually when somebody chooses to leave TNA, most of the time when you hear it, it's a money issue. They just, It's just a money thing. You know, most of the people who, who leave TNA, you say they were happy there, but, you know, it was just a money issue and that's understandable he knows I don't know Jesse's financial situation he knows his financial situation better than anyone else would and he felt that the amount they were offering him wasn't good for his particular financial situation you know on, he, he says he said in his interview that you know if I stay keep living in Florida I can still I still get work on the indie scene and I can you know at least work better doing that so hey that's what it is it is what it is you know, TNA is a smaller company. They don't have the, the, the huge bank account that WWE has. You know, people always want to compare TNA to WWE. You forget, TNA is not a billion-dollar corporation like WWE is, nor do they have a billionaire checkbook to work with like WCW had. You know, Panda Energy has a lot of money, but they don't put sink a, a huge amounts of money into TNA. You know, that's the way it is. So they don't they can't always afford to pay everybody everything they want. You know, they have a very crowded roster. And with only 90 minutes of TV time, you can't always have people on as much as you want to. And, you know, that's it, just kind of how it works out. As far as him leaving, um, I like the Ink Ink tag team, so that's one less tag team you got. And the tag team scene has been kind of lacking. With beer money splitting up, the machine gun... You know Saban being out, so that put the machine guns on the shelf. We ain't seen Alex Shelley in a, in a few months. You know what happens? When you know you hate to see him lose another tag team, and I don't know what this means for Shannon Moore <laughs> because before the Ink Heat thing got together, he really wasn't doing much of anything either. And, you know, he could do some, go wrestling the X Division. But, you know, I, I I don't see a whole lot for Shannon Moore to do by himself. He can do some stuff in the X Division for a little bit. Maybe get himself a new tag team partner. But, honestly, with Jesse gone, I don't see Shannon Moore getting used as used that much in the future. But, you know, Jesse said in the interview that I listened to that, you know, Ink Ink was Shannon Moore's idea. You know, Shannon's been in this business for a long time. You know, he was in, you know, all the way back in WCW's three count and before then, you know. He, you know, he he's smart enough to know that you got to come up with stuff for you to do to keep yourself on TV. And he talked about it. He said, uh, that was, Ink Ink was Shannon Moore's idea to help both of them out. 
Jesse Neal was talking about. It. He says, you know, when Shannon came in, you know, he's got the tattoos and the mohawk, and he's way more better known than I am. Jesse said he thought he was getting fired because they had Shannon Moore, but actually, Shannon, it was Shannon Moore's idea for them to team up, and he was the one who came with the idea and pitched it to Creative, and they put it together, and you know, made themselves a really good, decent tag team. Uh, I would like to see Jesse come back and see Ink Ink get back together. I, I like that team. You know, all around, Jesse has to do what he felt was best for himself. I, as a fan, I'm sorry to see it happen. And, you know, that's really all I can say. I, it, it leaves me wondering what's going to happen with Shannon Moore in the future. But hopefully Shannon comes up with something new for himself to do that works. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it at there on Jesse Neal. Sorry to see Jesse go. I like him. Hope he comes back. Alright. Um, do you think WWE only making Daniel Bryan and CM Punk the champion to make the IWC happy? Yeah, kind of. Doesn't hurt to pander to the IWC. You know, pander to that different group of fans. You always want to bring in new people. And if there's people who aren't watching, it, it, I, I think of it like this from a business standpoint. You want as many people watching, as many people buying merchandise, as many people ordering pay-per-views. You have a group of people that you feel aren't buying merchandise and spending money on the product that you could get to spend money on the product. And this will work. Do it. Because they're not losing any money by Cena not being a champion. All the Cena fans are still spending money. You know, they got over Zack Ryder and people like him. I'm glad that happened. And we look at another group and say, well, these people who aren't currently spending money on our product will spend money on it with these two guys as champions. So they try it. Yeah, I think they did it to try to make the IWC happy. Uh, will it be successful? Time will tell. If the IWC wants them to stay champions, they better start getting on board spending money. This is a money thing. It's all about money. That's what I will say to the IWC. All of you that are so happy that Daniel Bryan is champion now, go to WWEshop.com and buy some Daniel Bryan merchandise. He's got a couple of t-shirts out. If 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 if, t if merch ain't selling, he's not staying as champion. Zack Ryder got, got a push because people started buying his merchandise. When Zack Ryder started his YouTube show, not only did people start bringing signs, it was merchandise. Zack Ryder, you watched those early, those first few episodes of Z True Long Island Story. Zack Ryder had one t-shirt. That's all the merchandise he had. He had a t-shirt. And he hocked that t-shirt on every episode. Buy the shirt, buy the shirt, buy the shirt. He went on Twitter and said, and, and, and asked people to buy the shirt. He, he did a thing on Twitter too. If He said, if you, if you buy my shirt, and tweet me a picture of you wearing my shirt. Uh, send me, and I will um, direct message you. You direct message me your address, and I will send you an autographed picture. That was another thing he did. That was that was that's what he did on Twitter. Tweet me a picture. <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> tweet me a picture of you wearing my shirt. I'll send you an autographed photo. He did that a bunch, and that got people to buy the shirt. He hocked the shirt on his YouTube show. People started buying the shirt, and that got noticed. Okay, people are into this guy. They're buying his merch. When he cracked the top 10 merchandise sellers, that's when he started getting a real push. And they put out a second Zack Ryder t-shirt, and it sold well. Then they start, Then he said, you know, get WWE to start selling these broski headbands. And he used to he pushed that on every episode. Tell, go to, to WWEshop.com, tell them you want to buy uh, Zat Ryder broski headbands and a bunch of people did it and they started selling those and people started buying them now they got a whole bunch of Zat Ryder merchandise it comes down to is the guy making money so if you want Daniel Bryan to stay on top if you want Daniel Bryan to stay in the main event if you want Daniel Bryan to stay as world champion but go to WWE shop start buying some Daniel Bryan gear whatever they got for Daniel Bryan start buying it because if people don't buy Daniel Bryan merchandise, his push is gone. But back to the original question, yeah, I think they did to make the IWC happy and see if they could get new revenue. IWC, you wanted to stay that way, buy their stuff. So that's what I'll say to answer that question. Uh, XWF2001, thank you for the question. Uh, second question I got here was, let's see here. 
Uh, Mr. Killer Relic asked me to do my next commentary on the 2002 Royal Rumble. I'll probably do that one. I'll do that one probably a little later today. And then Crocodile Troy. Yeah, Troy. That's my name. Uh, Crocodile Troy asked me to do commentary on 91 Rumble. So I would do those. I'm going to try to do at least one of them today. I may go out of town to go do some shopping today. I don't know yet. But I would do at least one of the. Try to do one of those today. Uh, here we go. Here's the question I got. WWE TNA ROH guy sent me a question. Uh, wrestler gimmicks. I was talking about wrestler gimmicks in the ninety two in the ninety two Rumble commentary. <coughs> Excuse me. He says I agree with you that they should give more guys gimmicks. I already made a video on this, so I like to hear what you have to say about guys in WWE that they could give gimmicks and characters to, and free agent wrestlers they could bring in and give gimmicks and characters to. Um. Free agents I don't know about as well, but give me a second here. Let me load up WWE.com, and I'll go to where I know with some free agents. I'll go to Gerwig.net. They got a good list of free agents. I might have to do me another one of those roster free agents videos. I like doing those, putting together a roster. I might do one of those in a minute here. Give me just a second while I let the page load up. Uh, superstars... Wick. I know. Free agents. And we'll see what we can see. Okay, here we go. Alright, so I am now on the WWE Superstars page. Let's see who I see who needs a gimmick. Alright. Um, going down the list, we got, uh, well, okay, AJ's got a gimmick, Oksana, I don't even know what Oksana's doing, we got Del Rio, Del Rio just gotta show off his money a little more, they say he's rich, and that he's this rich Mexican aristocrat, but he doesn't show his wealth, he comes out in expensive cars, but that's about it, you know, I, I mentioned in the video, you know, Ted DiBiase used to do vignettes where they show him doing things with his money, to get over the fact he's rich. Alex Riley, he had a gimmick as the as the uh, douchebag jock, but they turned him face, so he can't do that anymore. Since they turned him face, don't have anything. When you saw him on NXT, you know he he come out in his vest, it was like a high school athlete Letterman jacket, and you know that was his thing. You know I'm the bully, I'm like that the high school jock, the guy who dated the head cheerleader thing, and that was a gimmick, and you know, he could do more with it. But they turned him face to feud with the Miz, and now he doesn't have anything. So with Alex Riley, you could either turn him back heel and let him do the jock thing anymore, but eh, there's really nobody to work with him on it. He's got to start doing something. He doesn't do anything. So let's see, what can you do with Alex Riley? You could try to build on that as a babyface form, but that's kind of what Jesse Sorensen is doing in TNA. He's like the babyface jock. You know, the cool jock you knew in high school. They didn't bully people around. You know. Guy Alicia Fox, who's just Black Kelly Kelly. I I really think with Alicia Fox, as a wrestler, I, I don't really like her that much in the ring. And I really thought she was her best was when she was with DJ Gabriel as his valet, and she was just a cute, adorable, dancing, fun party girl. And what I would do with her is I would get um, Darren Young and and uh, Percy Watson back together, and they could do their gimmick from uh, FCW, the South Beach Party Boys, and have her team up with them. And they could just be this fun-loving group. I think they would do much better in having a new tag team. Alex Riley, I look at him. I think he would do he could do something well in a tag team. Um, who with? We'll figure that out as we go. Uh, we got Beth Phoenix. We got Big Show. We got the Bella Twins. Who should just be managing somebody? They should manage a guy instead of fighting over Del Rio. They should start managing someone. Who I'm not sure. Brodus Clay. I say make him a beast. Make him. Make him a beast. Make him a monster. Make him a new Vader. Kurt Hawkins. They need a look. You know, he teamed with Tyler Rex, but he needs a look. He doesn't have a look with him. So, 
the, the problem with coming up with gimmicks for these guys, they are all so generic looking. And I said this before, you got Alex Riley, who kind of looks like Kurt Hawkins, who kind of looks like Daniel Bryan, who kind of looks like Dolph Ziggler, who kind of looks like Drew McIntyre, who kind of looks like Evan Bourne, who kind of looks like Cody Rhodes, who kind of looks like Jack Swagger. Hard to come up with, man. You need a hook. You need something. You need to fake something that you can use to build a gimmick. Cody Rhodes' whole thing came from dashing Cody Rhodes that stopped him from being a was they did something where the Divas voted on who the most handsome WWE superstar was, and they picked him as the most handsome superstar. And they took that and rolled with it and made him into dashing Cody Rhodes. And then they evolved that character into disfigured Cody Rhodes and then evolved into the character that he is now. You need some kind of hook for Alex Riley. You need some kind of hook for Kurt Hawkins. You need something with him. I think a couple of these dudes could get together and be tag teams. That might work out something else. You can't go wrong with a short faction. Factions always work for getting the group over. And then you build from the group as a whole. When we look at a lot of these guys, it's, it's like, what can you do with them? Because I don't know what their talents are or what they have to work with. Um, swagger, turn him heel, make him, uh, turn him face, make him the, the patriotic guy. All-American, American. He Slater. God, what can you do with He Slater? You know, he calls himself the one man rock band, but there's nothing musical about his gimmick. He Slater, do something musical with him. His his that's his nickname, the one man rock band, but he doesn't do any rock. He doesn't come out with an instrument. Remember that old guy, uh back in the early nineties, they had this dude named Man Mountain Rock, and his gimmick was he would play the guitar. In the beginning of his matches, I mean, he was a jobber, but still, it, 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 at least you had something to connect with. <laughs> he Slater need to start. If he's a rock band, he needs to act like a rock band. He's supposed to be a rock star, and then he needs to look like a rock star. He needs to talk like a rock star. He needs to act like a rock star. Nothing about him says rock star. <laughs> And then, as I look down the roster, more generic-looking dudes. Johnny Curtis, some gen another generic-looking guy. Justin Gabriel, another generic-looking guy. I mean, they could benefit of having the Cruiserweight title back for some of these dudes, you know. Kofi still pretty generic. I'm going to need more time to work on this one. God, there's a lot of just generic-looking dudes. Michael McGillicuddy, there's another one. They just look so generic. They need costumes. They need some color to them. You know, Michael McGillicuddy, he's the son of Mr. Perfect. But he ain't perfect at all. Boy, man, your, your question is depressing me. Hmm. I mean, Truth just started being a crazy conspiracy theorist. And that worked for him. Ted Jr., they should do the opposite of, of, of the million dollar man with him. You know, the million dollar man was always using his money to for for selfish means. I think Ted Jr., he's talked about being part of the people and not really being like his father. I think he should do something more the opposite to give himself more of a baby face. Kind of like the million dollar man would do vidnecks where he pays people to be unfair. I think Ted DiBiase should do vignettes where he's doing like charitable things with his money. You have the WWE call up a legitimate charity. It's somewhere in a, in a neighborhood, you know, like a, a homeless shelter or, a, you know, a soup kitchen, stuff like that. And, they, and WWE can just take a few, some money and make a donation. You know, what 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 organization, wouldn't, what like homeless shelter wouldn't be happy to get like $2,000 worth of food? Call them up and say, look, we want to make a donation. We're going to buy you $2,000 worth of food and bring it to you. Uh, could you put together a list of things you need? But we want to film it. One of our wrestlers is going to gonna bring it and we want to shoot it to show on TV and I'm like yeah sure you know do it and yeah, they're not gonna turn down a two thousand dollars worth of donations and stuff and you do a vignette where, where Ted DiBiase is pulling up and he pulls on his car and there's a truck with him with stuff on it, and he has his servants there taking just all this food and clothing and stuff and, and giving this donation of legit and making a legitimate donation to this this uh, whatever charitable organization, you know, like a homeless shelter or a soup kitchen, something like that, and giving them this food, and you know he could have a, like they can be really babyface about it, you know, 
that you know he could just do like them about how it's, it's good to help the less fortunate you know you know he could say something like charity is priceless or something like that and you show that and that gets him over as this gooey gooey old school baby face I mean really gooey baby face you know instead of being the rich kid who uses his money to be selfish he uses his money to help people you can do that every couple of weeks you know in every episode here we are in this town and we're at the such and such uh, soup kitchen and I'm here to make a uh, bring a big donation and you can show like them wheeling off like truck loads of food like like it, and they're like in the supermarkets getting stuff and they're making these big donations and you see the people there tell them how great for their ass, thank you for your generosity Ted and and, and, and them filming it in and, and they have the WWE cameras there to film it and that makes Ted DiBiase even it ain't more of a baby face like cause right now he's doing this thing on Smackdown with Jinder Mahal and Jinder Mahal's thing with him is like you know you're a man of wealth but yet you you, you hang out with peasants and commoners you, you're better than them you should act like you're a man of wealth and and Teddy, I was like, I'm not like that. Get it over. Go the extra mile. Make it gooey. Just gooey. And, I would make it just gooey and cheesy, just how how sweet it is. Just And you know, I'm a man of means, but I want to help the less fortunate and help those whenever I can. So we're here to make this big donation. And, and then you play one of those before his matches. You play it on the Titan Tron, then he comes up for his match. People will go nuts. That is great. Ted, you are such a great dude. And then you just have some heels, you know, have the heels that he feels would act more selfish like, and, you know. I think it works. I actually just kind of think I got an idea for a storyline you could do with that. But we'll talk about it later. It's hard to think of gimmicks for these guys because they are so generic looking. Like, none of these guys that I'm looking at on this roster that D gimmicks, none of them inspire me. They need a new look, and I don't know what kind of look you could give them. The thing about Zack Ryder that made me want to, that inspired me to think of stuff about him when I used to do other videos, some of my older videos, that he had a unique look. These dudes need to come up with some unique looks for themselves, because they all come out in you know, basic one color trunks, maybe with their name on it. And I watch a SmackDown. Ted DiBiase comes out in regular red trunks with his name on him, and he was fighting Jinder Mahal, who was just in regular trunks with his name on him, and Ezekiel Jackson has red trunks with his name on them, Drew McIntyre, black trunks with his name on them. They all look so much alike. How many people on this roster just wear basic trunks with their name on them? They don't look any different. That That's the issue. I'm going to need a little more time to think on this and see what I can come up with. And I haven't done an episode of re-gimmicking in a while, but it's kind of difficult with so many generic looking dudes. So, what I'm going to say, WWE TNA ROH guy, I don't think I can answer that question right now. I'm going to need a little more time to look at these dudes individually and try to give them, think of some kind of character for most of them. It's that they look so generic. You know, you can always go with making their wrestling style part of their gimmick. You know, Daniel Bryan always tries to talk up his submission skills, you know. Uh, Justin Gabriel has that 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 uh 450 splash that get that's still pretty over now, you know. Talk more about it. Rest of them, I got nothing right now. But I'm gonna give them some more thought, and hopefully I can come up with something later and talk about it. Um, as for free agents, Hmm. I don't know. As far as free agents go, the only guy I really want to see coming to WWE is scrap out of Adam Pierce. And if you've seen Adam Pierce, he just needs to be himself. His, his, his he's great at what he does, man. He already has a great gimmick. He doesn't need me to give him one. The dude's fantastic as he is. But I'm going to have to take more time in the future and really sit down and look at these guys individually, look at other guys on the roster, and see if we can come up with some interesting gimmicks for them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep that in mind and try to do them one at a time. 
Send me suggestions on specific guys, and I'll try to do them one at a time and see what I can come up with for them. But trying to think of them all off the fly right now, I'm not going to be able to. Because when I'm coming trying to come up with a gimmick for a guy, it's something I need to put a lot of thought into. Because it all depends on who the guy is, what he can do, his acting ability, and who else he got to work with. Because I also need a gimmick that will work with other people. I can't give a guy a gimmick if his gimmick doesn't open him up to anybody to feud with. So I'm, what I'm going to do is take some more time and look at some of these guys individually. And then I'll try to make videos on individual guys that we can talk about coming up with better gimmicks for them. So sorry I couldn't really answer your question right now, though. But, wow, this video is 25 minutes already? Dang. All right, then. Let me go ahead and stop right here. Um, anything else I want to talk about while I'm here? Loved Impact last night, uh, yesterday. Steen doing the gay voice to Madison Rain. I like when Steen does the gay voice. It's always funny. It cracks me up every time. Knockouts were in the main event. That was always cool. So, yeah. So, I'm going to leave it there. So, uh, thank you for that question as well. And I got another hour. So, I think I'm going to go ahead and do my next Royal Rumble commentary video. I'll probably do it right now. So, that being said, uh, anybody else has any questions or topics they'd like me to talk about in the video, go ahead and send them to me. Sorry I couldn't give better answers for these two. These were some that they're going to require me to have do a lot more thought, though. So, that being said, this is the Shadow Ranger. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.